On this week's edition of Stupid Sh** States Like to Regulate, we're gonna talk about Title 20's Division 2, Chapter 4, Section 16053, specifically regarding the evil gaming monitors. The all new Z20 mechanical gaming keyboard from EVGA features optical mechanical switches available in clicky or linear versions, TOF sensor, four kilohertz report rate and media controls, making it a great choice for multi-purpose setups. To learn more and to see the full list of features of the new Z20 from EVGA, click the link in the description below. So just like in our last video where we talked about the whole California legal gaming computer type stuff and we set the record straight on exactly what the regulation was so people could understand what was happening and have informed decisions so they can understand what a website shows can't ship to California, Oregon, Washington, or whatever other crap states like to regulate these types of things. Uh, so you understand why. It's not just gaming computers are bad. Like, watch that video and you'll understand why I'm gonna tell you high-end gaming computers are exempt and not regulated. So you can see that all those bullshit articles like futurism and all that crap are nothing but tabloids and clickbaits so that they can serve you 53,000 ads that you just paid them to go and read a two sentence headline. Moving forward here, Title 20 Division 2 Chapter 4 in this particular section is referring to monitors. They have another section as well where they talk about notebooks and multi-display notebooks and we don't care about that honestly. I think it's stupid to regulate something that's also battery controlled or battery powered, but I digress. We're gonna talk specifically about monitors. You guys uh, asked us to and we, Spent some time today understanding the regulation, finding all the definitions as such defined, and then the power modifiers. Because just like in our computer video, we talked about desktops and the different um, scenarios or factors at which you can have additional power draw allowed to you, um, there's some stuff here to, to be digested. So first of all, this one, unlike computers, does have a power on regulation as well as a sleep slash standby regulation. So there's two separate prongs to this particular um, regulation. So computers, we talked about was specifically in the four different idle states, has nothing to do with how much power they draw when they're on, has nothing to do with them being too powerful for the state of California. And it has to do, do with them being too power inefficient in a state of idle, which is a completely different type of headline. Monitors, however, are being uh, you know, regulated in both on and off states. Um, so testing methodology, they really sort of deferred to Energy Star for this one. Energy Star, uh, if you guys aren't aware, you'd be, I guess, living under an entire mountain of rocks at this point, but Energy Star is the third party um, body at which they kind of go through and do all the testing methodology to determine how much power a device is using or whatever, and then they make recommendations to different governments for power regulations on what's considered efficient or non-green friendly and all that sort of such. Almost every electronic device on the planet now has some sort of an ENERGY STAR rating. Uh, monitors are no exception. So the testing methodology here is that in ON mode, where the screen is backlit, uh, they have to be done at 200 nits. Um, we don't have a way to measure this here in our studio. We don't have an actual scope we can put on the screen to measure brightness, but it's important to note here that the power on testing is done in a maximum brightness of 200 nits. All right, so the power on mode, and I'm gonna apologize to you guys right now. I'm gonna try to do this in a very dumbed down version that's still understandable. For those of you that love equations and formulas, this is like, a wet dream for anyone that loves formulas when it comes to the way that all of this is calculated. We did a very simple calculation on a monitor that only has very few modifiers, uh, our ViewSonic Elite right here. We do have other monitors here on the table which we'll be plugging in with our watt meters so you can just kind of see a demonstration of the kind of stuff that they're looking for here. So the formula, let's, let's just talk about the formula here for a second. Like I said, there's a basic like E on underscore max, or that's energy on max. That is how much energy can it consume when it's on, period. There's a modifier to that, like we said. And the different modifiers are, for instance, does it have a G-Sync or V-Sync uh, module? Is it a gaming monitor? This is actually defined specifically as such. A gaming monitor is any sort of monitor that has a variable refresh rate or it's controlled by the uh, refresh rate or frame rate of the thing it's showing. Is it an OLED display? Is it curved? which is one that we can't really wrap our mind around because a curved monitor does not consume more power because it's curved. And we did a lot of digging on this to try and figure out where they came up with that particular formula, but they are allowing additional power consumption to a curved monitor. Now we used to see curved monitors in standard 16 by nine quite a bit. Um, remember, this is something that 
was a part of the original CEC 2016 proposal and such, um, it's also important to note that on November 18th, 2020, they did hold a public hearing where they were making amend amendments to this particular uh, formula and such here and definitions. They realized they had to go in there and actually redefine some of this stuff and redo some of the formulas and uh, just some of the criteria uh, that went into effect December 9th, 2020. And then just like we talked about with the computers, they had one year uh, period there at which the regulation and enforcement will begin, which is why you see the December 9th, 2021 dates on all of this when we talked about monitors in our last video and the stuff that started making its around the internet, way around the internet where people are only reading headlines. So that's why you see the December 9th, 2021. This stuff actually was approved and into effect as written by the regulation with the CEC, November, or December 9th, 2020. It's also important to note on here that uh, we refer to a table down here, which we're calling table V5. Um, we do have a difference here between models manufactured on or after July 1st, 2019 and before January 1st, 2021. So there's a, 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 what, a year and a half period right there. And then the earlier regulation here, uh, or technically the most recent regulation here, starts on models manufactured on or after January 1st, 2021. So there was a period of effect there where there was kind of a grace period where they were given a little bit more leeway on how much power they could add to their modifier table on this formula that we're gonna show you here in a second. And then anything after January 1st has a little bit tighter guideline, in well, requirement or regulation in terms of its power draw. So moving on, um, the way that they define some of this stuff here is E on, right? The, so we're showing you the formula right here and I want you to understand the, the, form, the formatic, for, formulaic stuff. I, I don't wanna go, I don't wanna turn this into a math video, but my math nerds out there are absolutely gonna love this type of video. So E on is the computer monitor on mode power draw in watts as determined under section 1604 V3 of this article. So they define what power on means. E on max is the maximum on power draw in watts as determined by table V4. And we will show all this on the screen, don't worry. All right, so EEP is the enhanced performance display allowance in watts determined by table V5. And table V5 here has the definitions of these, these different things. So that's the enhanced performance color display gamut of yada, 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 it's got all the, ga the gamma ranges here. Or a gaming monitor without incremental hardware-based assistance. Now, gaming monitor also has its own definition here of a monitor with incremental hardware-based assistance. So they're varying the different, or actually defining the difference here between like a FreeSync panel and a G-Sync panel. I remember G-Sync panels do have hardware modules in the panel physically that is handling the controller for the variable refresh rate, whereas FreeSync uh, is a more open source software-based type uh, variable refresh rate. EFRRG or fast refresh rate gaming monitor with MRR less than 480 Hertz. Now there's another piece of that there where in the amendment that I talked about, they actually add a little more definition to this. It's actually a range of 300 Hertz to 480 Hertz uh, or greater, technically 300 Hertz or greater, where you get an additional modifier and how much power it's allowed to draw but it cuts off at 480 Hertz, but it starts at 300. So that's why you're seeing like some of these 360 Hertz panels start to make their way to market. They technically are allowed a higher power draw um, in terms of its regulation. I don't think that's the thing that brands are using to kind of get around any sort of uh, regulation here because high refresh rate monitors like that do increase the power consumption the higher the frame rate goes in terms of the refresh rate. So it's just sort of six one way, half a dozen the other, it's all sliding together. It's not getting them around any regulation, they just fall under a different portion of it. And the scaling is probably the same, it just scales up. Um, and then uh, obviously we've got OLED, because OLED is a lot more power consumption than say a solid uh, backlight or LED backlight panel. OLED does consume more power because each individual pixel, pixel is emitting light itself. And then as I mentioned, curved, curved monitor <laughs> is all it says. And that gives you an additional 0.3 in the formula. Let's talk about the formula. Because what we did here is we took our ViewSonic Elite 1440p 27 inch um, IPS 165 Hertz panel, it is overclockable. And Phil basically did the equation on here where he went in to the tables and we'll highlight this on the screen as we go so you can sort of follow along. We use this panel because it more represents what we think is gonna be more common out there than a panel that's gonna have all of these different modifiers. We want you to understand what it is that they're regulating. So this is a 27 inch panel and the reason why the size of the panel matters is unlike resolution where the amount of pixel in a monitor that's 
17 inch or 27 inch, if it's 1920 by 1080, it's the same amount of pixels. However, the actual footprint or the size of the display itself, the actual viewable, not the bezels, actually determines how much power it's using because you have more lighting squared in there which can consume more power. So for instance, the, this particular monitor would fall under the energy on, must be less than, so there's a less than symbol, E on max plus E game. So all Phil did was go online and basically get some of the, uh, like the sizing. We didn't actually come out here and measure this. He actually went from bezel to bezel, which to be fair would, would be a little bit more lenient, but we're just showing you the way the formula would sort of work here. Although this is almost edge to edge display here. Um, and then he took the Eon Max, which is every monitor is gonna have that. That's gonna start with Eon Max. And then this does qualify as a gaming monitor because it does have a variable refresh rate that is hardware based. This is a G-Sync panel. And those are the only two formulas that are the only two modifier or one modifier that he gets to add to this panel. Cause it's 144 Hertz native, 165 overclock. So it's not over 300 Hertz. Um, it's not an OLED, it's not curved. And it's basically e-game covers all of the power consumption based on this monitor type. So it's not gonna take into account things like the EEP and all of that. So if we go and take that formula here, by plugging in those different table modifiers, table V4 and V5, that's gonna give us our Eon Max based on the size screen that it is. So because this is a 27 inch, less than five megapixels. So 4K, you can see here on the bottom half of this, it's greater than five megapixels, which is essentially 4K. This is less than, four, than five megapixels. So we use the less than or equal to five megapixel here. So 25 inch to 30 inch, gives you this formula right here. So you don't have to worry about what those numbers exactly mean. That's just the formula that Energy Star came up with to use to figure out what the allowable watts and the consumption here is gonna be. So that's how he came up with this right here. It's 4.2 times 3.684 plus the 0 0.7 times 180. He got the 180 because he did the, the height uh, times horizontal. So vertical times horizontal gives him the area. That's how he got 180. So now that we figured out what the Eon Max is, we get to add our modifier of E game. Now E game, if we go down to table V5, tells us we can take that number that we just figured out and do 0.3 times our Eon max. That is how we get an allowable 23.424747744 watts uh, when powered on. So that's very, it might seem very complicated. If you actually sit there and look at these tables and start plugging numbers in, it'll start to make a whole lot of sense here. Now that we've got the ugly math side out of here, oh, and also too, in terms of the sleep and off mode, because that's the other half of this, like I said, it must consume less than or equal to 1.2 watts in the computer monitor sleep mode and computer, computer, I almost say computer all the time, computer monitor off power combined. Well, let's go ahead and see what our elite is showing here in off. Backlight just turned off. It is consuming 14.1 watts, 14.0, 14.1. That's greater than 1.2 watts. Uh, yeah, so what you're gonna find here is a lot of monitors that are either designed and or manufactured prior to that uh, January 19 date that we talked about are probably gonna completely miss this mark of uh, the amount of watts it's able to draw when, uh, when off. So the power supply is plugged in. That's obviously gonna be drawing some power. So one thing we did find in the regulation is this is measured AC from the wall. So that's exactly what our watt meter is doing here. The only thing plugged in is the monitor. This is asleep waiting for a signal to turn it on. Remember this, you ever turn on your computer and the monitor just turns on? That's a, it's asleep and it's sensing the cable for any sort of a display signal. Once it feels it, it turns itself on. So it's using 14 watts to do that. This is the kind of vampire power draws that they're looking for in these types of regulations. And that's why sleep and idle was something they targeted when it came to the desktop PCs itself. So let's move on to our Nixius here. That's a 1080p TN, just it's a high refresh rate, 144 Hertz, no frills monitor. Check this out. And it's actually older than the Elite. If we plug that in, it's gonna turn itself on. 5.8, 16.3, 25. It is displaying. The backlight is on. Remember how the way LCD works? The backlight is on all the time. And then the pixel gates themselves open and close depending on the signal. So the backlight being on means we're consuming more, as, much, as much power that way as we're going to. 30 watts is what we're seeing right now. It just turned itself off. 14, 0. 0.0. That monitor 
is not required to follow this regulation because it was manufactured far before the date that regulates this, when unfortunately the Elite Monitor is manufactured after the date that is being, uh, this is September 2020, guys. So, Nixius, good job. You are not pulling any vampire power whatsoever in off. 0.0, .0 which really begs to, like, how does it know when to turn on if it's not pulling any power? It's just super efficient. Also, what is that monitor doing with 14 watts? Yeah, 14 <laughs> watts of what? What's it doing? Anyway, moving on over here to our Asus. This is a uh, old school panel. I don't even remember the model number of this one. It's one of the v VG, what? 348Q, I think. Oh, whatever. Three, it's one of the 34 inch 1440p or Q WQHD ultra wide panels here. 3440 by 1440. If I plug this in, it's also a 100 hertz panel. So same thing, it's auto turning itself on. 29, 39. So it didn't even spike as high as the Elite did. It just turned off, 10, 14. So something tells me, it has something to do with the, 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 the logic board inside these panels and the power supply are pulling about the same amount of power. We thought maybe it was something to do with the power brick itself. So what we had done is we actually had unplugged this from the monitor itself and just had the power brick plugged in and then it went to zero. So we're gonna interrupt the current flow of the discussion here. We just showed you that the Nixius panel is consuming 0.0, .0 watts in sleep. That's sleep, not even off. We didn't physically toggle the button off. It just went to sleep power cons conservation mode on its own. And the Asus panel and the Elite panel have one thing in common. They're both G-Sync panels that have a physical hardware G-Sync module inside of them. So we started wondering, this is our little area here where we have our test panels and test benches and stuff. And uh, we wanted to test something. So what we have back here that Nick is sitting in front of, that is our 3440 by 1440 LG 950F panel. Uh, GK 950F, I believe it is, doesn't matter. It is a free sync panel. There is no G-Sync module in there. So we were like, wait a minute here. What if it's the G-Sync module that's consuming the 14 watts? It's highly suspect that they were both pulling the same amount of wattage. So if I plug it in, so it's booting up, it's using 82.5 watts at boot. First of all, it's an older panel than the regulation, but it's also set to 100% brightness out of the box. It is an HDR panel, HDR, HDNR. HDR, HDR enables through the desktop, it has to feel HDR signal first. So that's just the panel's brightness itself. Is it off right now? Yeah. Look at that, 0, 0.0 watts, went off. So, this LG panel right here is also a non-G-Sync monitor. So I went, what happens with this one? It is consuming 0, 0.0 watts, and you'll notice it's polling, 0, 0, 0.0, 0, 0.4. 0, 0, 0.3, right? On the next one, 0.4. But it's not even pulling a watt during that polling period. It does have Thunderbolt pass-through, so we believe that that could be the Thunderbolt module that's sort of like, is there anything? No. Anything? In, in. Hey, 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 that's what it's doing. Not even a watt. This panel right here is the very first G-Sync panel I ever got. This is the 4K, 2K UHD Acer panel, which has a G-Sync module in there, as you can see. So if we go ahead and plug this one in, it's this guy right here. It'll power on. 12 watts, 21, 36, 9, or 46, 48, now I can turn it off. Fourteen watts. So, what can we deduce from this? The G-Sync panel, as designed, will never meet this regulation. But if you want to know now, you can take that fourteen watts times however many hours it's on, figure out your kilowatt hours, and then times that times your rate, however many days there are in a month and you can figure out how much power you're actually paying for that just to be plugged in. It's only gonna be a buck if that, but times that by how many monitors are in the state and you can see why they're starting to target this. Which brings us to the more important part of this video. Does this affect you? How does it affect you? And in what way? Other regulations. Be shipped with a screen luminance less than or equal to 270 nits. A manufacturer may ship with additional features enabled even if they were turned off in testing. Let me just, okay, this is, this is state legislature at its best. You must conform to these testing methodologies. 200 nits, but you can ship it with 270. Now that's not a lot, that's not very bright, 
already they're making them conform to a testing regulation methodology and standard and then allowing them to ship greater than that. The other thing too, all the things that consume a bunch of power that, that, that they're trying to fight, high refresh rate, G-Sync, I don't wanna say fight, they're trying to regulate, G-Sync modules, um, LED lighting, all the off power stuff, the eco modes and all that, as long as they ship with those things disabled, they're fine. You know as well as I do, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go in there, you're gonna enable gaming mode on your monitor, you're gonna enable, if it has backlighting, you're probably gonna enable the lighting, you're gonna enable G-Sync, you're gonna up the brightness, you're gonna up the refresh rate, the contrast, all those things that make it go higher. All the manufacturers have to do is show that the monitor is capable of meeting the regulation and then they're allowed to ship it and let you, the end user, do whatever the hell you want to it to consume all the power in the world. It's not going to change anything. So this video might seem a lot more boring and lots of formulas and a lot of, uh, I guess technically algebra because we are filling in values. But at the end of the day, this isn't gonna affect you in any way. I was a little surprised to find out that uh, the oldest monitor here on this table <laughs> is the least power consuming when it comes to uh, its phantom power draw, which is just sitting here off. I'm a little surprised to find out that this Elite, however, <laughs> manufactured within the date ranges affected here, are just literally saying F in chat to all of those regulations. So that's that, guys. This isn't gonna affect you in any way whatsoever. It's also probably not gonna affect pricing any way whatsoever because again, all of these features and stuff that all, all they have to do, this, this comes out of the box with a 40% brightness because that's how they're probably getting that 270 nit, if they're even following it, honestly. I wish we had a brightness meter so that we could actually see. Um, it doesn't seem like it. they, they gave a crap. But uh, yeah, this is something that will start going into effect regulation effects. It's in regulation effect now, but it'll probably start being um, enforced December 9th, 2021. I don't, it's not gonna affect you in any way whatsoever. Um, ironically though, like, there's a lot of exemptions in this too, and it includes things like hospital monitors and all of that. Phil started laughing because he imagined a scenario which somebody's doing surgery and then like the, all the, the device monitors turn off. I was thinking like that, that thing I said in the last video, like patient exam rooms and you've got thousands and thousands of them with the screensaver bouncing around. I was thinking more or less of that. But regardless, um, this is even less of an effect in terms of the overall power consumption, I think. Actually, I'm gonna take that back. My test bench, which is a 10900K with a 3080 on it, with the motherboard lights going in off mode, consumes 10 watts when powered off. These two monitors consume 50% more power than that desktop just sitting there plugged in. This makes a little more sense than the desktop one. But anyway, that's where we're gonna leave it. That's the monitor regulation. It's not gonna affect you in any way whatsoever. This just gives more fodder and a lot of ammunition for people who are just really anti-government, which, um, hey, have at it. I, I think our government's stupid. I, I don't, I think these old people don't know what the hell they're talking about half the time. And uh, I will say though, I think the monitor off power consumption one makes a lot of sense because there's no reason for this to be consuming 14.2 watts or eff effectively three screw in LED light bulbs worth of power being on just sitting there. Why are they consuming 14 watts doing nothing? Be Nixius. Consume nothing when you're plugged in. But consume all this content by making sure you're subscribed and or uh, clicking the bell and all that so you don't miss these amazing educational videos where I show you I'm not just an idiot who drops stuff. I actually do know some things. But don't let that fool you. I'll go back to being stupid in our next video. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Well, you guys will see us yesterday for the uh, RTFM show where we kind of just get drunk and act stupid on stream. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one.